we've been talking about k-means models and now it's time to take a step into a more general form of model with our k-means models our distance metric or our similarity metric really gave rise to a notion of spherical clusters or or in our 2d case they're circular clusters and these circles or spheres come from the fact that we treat all of our featured dimensions in exactly the same way furthermore we we don't have a way of expressing this idea that multiple features might actually vary with each other. So, so what we want to do is take a step where our cluster shapes actually really tell us something about the local manifold structure for where the, the cluster is uh, placed in the feature space. And as part of that, we want to explicitly acknowledge that some of our features vary more than others. And, and this is very common within our data sets because different features come in with different units. Some vary a tremendous amount in terms of values, others vary very little. And we're also going to capture this idea that the features can vary together. Multidimensional Gaussians are a tool that allow us to get at these issues. So these are density functions. The input to the density function is an n-dimensional sample, so an xi in our lingo. And what this, uh, what this density function generates is a scalar likelihood. So it still says, what is the likelihood of this particular sample that we've observed? And these models actually allow us to capture these new features that we'd like to be able to uh, handle. So let's go ahead and look at a little bit of um, math around these Gaussian PDFs. So first, let's go back to the scalar form of a Gaussian. Using our statistics notation, we, have, we say that the likelihood of some sample xi is uh, a function of, say, the mean and the standard deviation. And this is equal to uh, this, the xi minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. And, and then there's also a, a constant term out here. It's it, not a function of x. It's, it is a function of uh, sigma. We're, we're not going to really worry so much about this. Um, this exponential term is the thing that gives us the Gaussian shape. And then the f term just scales that up or down so that it's a proper probability density function, meaning that it, if we integrate the entire function, it integrates to 1. So with this formulation, we have a PDF that, that might look something like this, where that, that mean determines where the peak is of that density function, and the width here is determined by our sigma a parameter. OK, so that's, so that's a, a first bit of context here. The second bit of context, I want to go back to our soft k-means formulation. I'm going to write this a little bit differently than, than what we did uh, in our soft k-means conversation, uh, but functionally, it's the same thing. So first off, there's a notion of a score. So this is the score for sample i with respect to cluster k. And we're going to make that equal to this exponential here. And then we explicitly talked about the probability of sample i being in cluster k. So this PIK, uh, this stands for the probability of sample i being in cluster k, and that's just SIK over the sum of all of the uh, S's for sample i. So J iterates over uh, all of the clusters. So, so this formulation is exactly what we had uh, in the soft k-means conversation. I had just collapsed uh, these two pieces into a single equation. OK, so another way to, to write this uh, top equation is, looks like this.
And, and remember that these M's and X's, these are uh, column vectors. And, and I've talked about this equivalence between this vector length here, actually this is squared vector, vector length here, and, uh, and uh, the, writing it in this way, this inner product formulation. Now what I'm going to do is uh, rewrite this in a slightly different form, e to the minus, I'm going to move this beta term. And remember that this beta term controlled uh, how sharp our Gaussians were, or how sharp our clusters were. Okay, so this capital sigma term here, this is a, uh, a matrix. And when I, when I come along this path here, this matrix is uh, equal to the following. Oops. So there, uh, in the upper left, we have a, a one over beta. And along this diagonal, we have one over beta. This is a square matrix. And then all of the other terms are just zeros. So if I take the inverse of this matrix, then I have a, uh, a matrix that has just betas down the diagonal. So that would be this term in here. And what we're doing is multiplying each one of the elements in this difference here by, uh, by beta. And, and this is equivalent to uh, the formulation where we first do the inner product here and then multiply the result by beta. So, so, so they're equivalent formulations. Um, but this turns out to be a more general way of writing things that allows us to, to do some more interesting things. I would like to say, just to bring this back to other things we've talked about, this is a distance metric. In particular, this is the squared Euclidean distance. Okay, so so we've we've made this as as we've gone from this form to out to this form over here, uh, we've just made things a little bit more general, and hopefully you see the relationship between the the, the different ways of writing this squared Euclidean distance uh, metric, and and in particular taking the the exponential of that value. Okay, so now it's time to actually write the likelihood function for the general Gaussian distribution. So the likelihood for the general Gaussian looks like this. So xi now is a column vector. And it is a function of a mean vector. And we've talked about those already. Those are our cluster means in, in the k-means formulation. And then we have this uh, covariance matrix that we uh, talked about before. And this is equal to a, it's a function of that covariance matrix, of, of, but it is a constant with respect to the xi's, so, so we don't need to worry too much about it. And then the exponential term looks like this. So comparing this formulation here to what we had written over here, the only thing that we've done differently is that we, we have the one half sticking out here, and uh, that, that's just the, the standard way of doing handling the formulation. Um, but what we're going to do is allow these capital sigma matrices to, uh, to take on anything that we want. 
with our soft k-means, they had to be diagonal and they, they were of this form here, but, but now we're going to allow any matrix. All right, let's talk a little bit about this matrix here, this covariance matrix. Uh, it has down the diagonals, it has our individual variances, so sigma zero squared, so that's feature zero, feature one variance is right there, feature two uh, variance is right there, and on down the line until we get to n, uh, sorry, m minus one squared. And then any of the other off diagonal terms, this is the covariance between feature zero and uh, say feature three is this particular element here. All right, so let's look at what uh, this type of uh, formulation can do for us. So let's, let's do a, a pair of examples here. I'm going to define a feature space. It is x0 by x1. And, and we have a, a set of uh, features here. Sorry, a set of samples in this feature space. And if I were to fit a Gaussian distribution to these samples, and what, that, what I mean by that is I'm going to estimate what the the mean is and what our covariance matrix is. And we can talk about that formulation here in a moment. If I were to estimate that, then my density function, it becomes a two dimensional function. So we've got X zero by X one and then density is coming out of the page. So it's a little bit hard to draw, but let me give that a shot. So we, we sort of have, we have zero density uh, sitting along here and then it, and then it comes up uh, in this region here, and then it drops off again. So that's along the x0 dimension, but likewise along x1, uh, I'm drawing on the back side, the density function, it's a hill, it drops off as you increase x1, and also as you decrease x1, we sort of, we have that drop off as well. So that, that may or may not be very easy to, uh, to see, but some a different way of drawing this particular density function is that uh, we, we can uh, make use of uh, something called iso likelihood lines. And what I mean by that is what we're going to do is define a particular uh, likelihood. So it might be 0.5 and ask what all points in this x0, x1 space correspond to the, the same likelihood, 0.5. So let me, let me go ahead and erase this here. And, and draw that in. So, so that ISO, so 0.5 say might correspond to that set of points right there, me, meaning along that circle. And, and now let's imagine a likelihood of uh, 0.3 instead. So that will uh, correspond to uh, another uh, circle that, that's larger. And, and uh, this might be 0.1. So, so this is very much of a topo map type of uh, representation of this function as we get uh, closer and closer into the center of this function, this uh, this hill is popping out higher and higher, and then, then the peak, of course, is in the middle of this uh, circle. With this particular Gaussian distribution here, our covariance matrix is relatively simple. It has uh, some some term here in in the diagonal, and since these are circles, we we have the same uh, variance for dimension uh, one as for dimension zero, and then we have zeros uh, sitting along the diagonal. Now, if we were to uh, increase dimension one here, what that would mean is that we would stretch these 
circles into ellipses. So we would end up with uh, ellipses that look like this. Or if we were to, to make A uh, smaller, then, then we would uh, compress the, the ellipses down like this. All right, let's do one more example, though, that really allows us to talk about the, the power of these Gaussian distributions. So let's imagine a sample set now that sits along like this. So I could use a Gaussian distribution to, uh, to capture a, a, a standard normal type Gaussian distribution like what we were just drawing to capture this set of points. So I might have something along these lines, but this really doesn't capture the, the nature of the data in, in that we're giving reasonable likelihood to, uh, to points in this area over here, to that part of the, the space, and there are points there that support that. But this part of space, we're giving the same likelihood, but we have no samples in our training set. And, and so what we'd really like is, is to have uh, shapes that are ellipses, but these ellipses should also be tilted. So in this case, we might have an ellipse here that's a very toward the very top of our hill, and then another one that looks like this, and another one that uh, that looks like this. So one way to read this is that uh, the likelihood of seeing a sample at this point here is identical to, uh, to this point here, even though the distances of these two points from the center of our cluster are very different from one another. So that's a small diff distance for it versus a very large distance. And, th and that's going to give rise to a different notion of distance metric here. And let's look back at, uh, at this uh, formulation. So this multiplication here this is not Euclidean distance, this is something called Mahalanobis distance. And, and in particular, this is uh, squared. And, and what this particular distance metric does is it, it with this, this distance metric, the, the distance from the center here to this point here is this considered to be the same as the distance from here out to here. Okay, so, so let's do one more thing. And I'd like to, to talk about how to estimate our uh, m's and sigmas. And, and what we do is we build a, a large likelihood function. Uh, so what, what I want to know is, so we'll call this L. What I want to, given a training set, what I want to know is what's the likelihood of observing this training set? So x0, x1, x2 all the way out to xn minus one, uh, given our parameters. And the essence here, well, so first of all, since this are samples from our training set, we assume that these are independent of one another, then we can make this uh, one big product of the individual likelihoods. So this is likelihood of sample I given our two parameters. And since they are independent, then uh, the left-hand side here is equivalent to the right-hand side. And then the way that we uh, figure out what the right M and sigma are is that we want to pick those so that we maximize L. So our M hat and our sigma hat, these are just simply the arg min, sorry, arg max over all possible means and sigmas of this likelihood function which is really a function of M and sigma. If, if you go about solving this, 
what you will end up with is uh, something that looks very familiar. So the, our mean of our Gaussian is just our sample mean. And our sigma is uh, something similar. So again, this, these are column vectors. So this difference here is a column vector, and this is a row vector. And when, when we multiply uh, these two together, we end up with a matrix uh, in and of itself. And, and that matches with our intuition that uh, sig sigma should, should be a matrix. All right, this turns out to be the biased estimate for uh, sigma hat, but one can correct for that to, to end up with an unbiased uh, estimate. All right, so that's, that's a very quick introduction to multidimensional Gaussians. And we're now going to turn around and start uh, using these to, to build up uh, a notion of clusters, and in particular, a notion of multiple clusters that are trying to capture all of the samples that we have in our data set.